So we could give the equation for the graph, or we can graph. Um, it's not quite like being in slope-intercept form. We have to keep in mind which one is which. It is, remember that they are perpendicular to that axis. So we are so used to the x being our horizontal axis, which it still is, but if it is another line, that line is actually, if it's horizontal, it will be y equals, if it's vertical, it will be x equals. So this would be x is equal to negative 2. Yes? You should have this package. It has, at the front it says, what are the zeros? It's pretty thick. Everybody else find their page, hopefully. 42. Yep. Thank you. And thank you for speaking up. I wouldn't want you to sit through the whole thing and be like, oh, I have nowhere to write anything. I didn't write anything down. So for number two, x equals or y equals? Y, right? It's a horizontal line. So it crosses the y axis, so it's going to be y equals 3. So it is this line. And so number three, all the way down there at the bottom, y is equal to, is that negative five? Two, three, four, five, yes, sorry. So then number four, we would have x is equal to four. On number five, they have traced the y-axis. Okay, so they have traced the y-axis. So it is a vertical line. Every point on the y-axis, the x is equal to zero. And then number six, it is a horizontal line again, so this will be y is equal to two. So the x is ever changing, but the y is equal to two in all of those cases. So on the back side of the page, now we're going to have the equation and make the graph. So we're just gonna go in the reverse of what we just did. And you are going to have some IXL lessons about this. On IXL, you have to have two points before it creates a line. It does not matter where your two points are. I typically would put one of my points on the axis, but then the other point could be anywhere. So when we're drawing it, we just kind of trace the line, and we don't necessarily worry about there being two points. So one, two, three, four, five. And so I'm just gonna go straight across here. Again, on IXL, before it will make the line, you'll have to click two points. But it would not matter if you clicked here and way out here, or if you clicked here and right next door. Any two points would still extend to be that same line. So if instead it's x, then so I'm going to go to the x-axis at negative 1. And then this one is going to go vertical. Unless it was something like x equals 0 or y equals 0, we should not be tracing an axis unless it was something equals 0. 
So if I went to the x at negative 1 and then I started to go across, I would be tracing the x-axis. So I don't want to do that. x is equal to 3. 1, 2, 3. So here and then it is not just that one point. It's any point on that vertical line. All of those points have x as their x, or have 3 as their x coordinate. And then y is equal to negative 2. And then any point along this horizontal line, y is equal to negative 2. Good afternoon, Bryce. So no surprises with 11 and 12. 11, we should have a horizontal line. If you have trouble remembering the difference in those two words, think about the horizon like looking out at a sunset along the horizon. So that's horizontal. And vertical, like a basketball player, maybe measures their vertical jump, how high off the ground they can get, like straight up vertical. Counting up four is my hardest part. One, two, three, four. Straight across. I turned my pencil off. One, two, three, four. And then for the x equals straight up and down, so negative seven. And then we have some questions. So what is the slope of the line that says y is equal to 4? Zero. Good. Okay, so if it's horizontal, which means y equals, the slope would be 0. What is the slope of a line where x is equal to negative 2? Undefined. undefined. So any vertical line, the slope is undefined. So when I see x equal by itself, there's no y at all, that slope would be undefined. If it's only a y with no x, that slope would be 0. So this is still x equal, so still undefined. And so which axis is y equal negative 1 parallel to? Mm. The x-axis, yes. So it's horizontal, and of the axes, the x-axis is the one that is horizontal. And the axis that x equals 4 is parallel to then would be the y-axis. And then just to be sure, sometimes people start to get, after they learn this, then they get some things mixed up about what we see in number 18. There at the bottom. So one of these says y is equal to 3, and the other one says y is equal to 3x. So y is equal to 3 is like what we've just done today. There is no x at all y is equal to 3x though. So this would be as if I said plus 0 and this is really as if I said 0x plus 3. So this would start at 0 and we would go up 3 and over 1. Or we could go down 3 and left 1. So y equals 3 has something that is different. Obviously, they look very different. But y equals 3 has a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of 3. 
where y is equal to 3x has a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 0. So the slope and the y-intercept are reversed. So for it to be horizontal or vertical, there, like if it's horizontal, there is no x at all. If it's vertical, there is no y at all. So when we have y equals 3x, that does still have both an x and a y. So the next page is some practice of a variety of things we have done in this um, packet, starting with slope. Let me make sure that I tell you the same thing that I put on here. La, 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 la. Tuesday. So what I would like for you to do on page 44 1 through 7, I would like you to do all of them. So 1 through 7, all of them. And then from 8 through 20, the graphing problems, just the even ones. So some of them may be like what you just we just talked about. Some of them will be slope-intercept form. Some of them are in standard form. And then, of course, we're reviewing slope in those earlier questions. So we'll take some time. If you finish that and I have not gone on to the next part of the notes, you will also find that you have some new IXL lessons. Some of them are what we talked about yesterday, and some are what we just talked about just now with horizontal and vertical lines. So starting with T19, some just ask for the y-intercept. So that means the x is 0. So I'm just doing 15 divided by 5. Because you're not graphing in this lesson, it could be messy, like this. 8 doesn't go into 15, so I'm going to put 15 over 8 as a fraction. That's it. If that fraction could reduce, I would have to reduce. So they don't all come out nice and pretty whole numbers, but you're not graphing, so it doesn't matter if it's pretty or not. In T20, you're going to graph using the intercepts. You should not be taking the time to put these in slope-intercept form. I can do 40 divided by 5 is 8. That's my x-intercept. And then 40 divided by 8 is 5. That's my y. And just those two points... These will come out nice and even. They will not, you will not be asked to put something in the middle of a, it will be on an actual integer. And when I said even, not like 2, 4, 6, 8, but whole numbers or negative numbers. And then the other two, the 21 and 22, are probably the easiest because they are only horizontal and vertical lines. So if I see it's horizontal, I will type y equals, and then the y-intercept is at negative 8. So one lesson, asks, um, one will ask me about the equations, the other will ask me to graph either horizontal or vertical lines. So there are four of them, but if, once you understand them, they really should go very quickly. And if you don't understand, 
then please, as you get in there, toss your hand up and I will try to assist. Okay, so you have one through seven and then evens on page 44 and 45. And then you also have those new IXL lessons. So I'll give you some time to work and I'll circulate around and see what questions you have or I can check things that you're getting to be sure that you're on the right track. And then probably in a, oh, it, you probably won't have everything done, but probably maybe 1.30, then I will cover this next lesson. And then remember this is scheduled as a two-period class, so if it feels like, oh, we always have so much, like if you're walking out of here at 2 o'clock, some of you I know you have to, your ride or you have work, and so you've been very diligent about getting things done. Some of you may not have to leave, but maybe you choose to leave. So please do not complain about the amount of work unless you are here every day until 3.30 and then you can't get it done. Then maybe I'm giving too much work. But I don't see that happening. You guys are all quite capable. <laughs>